Gratitude is a killer of destiny. When you are thankful, you have your thankful. An atmosphere of joyfulness is the breeding ground for miracles. I came as your prophet to announce to you by the authority of God on my life that this year will not end until your season changes. of establishment let me speak to us on quality living amen you know every new year is an opportunity to begin again a new year does not necessarily constitute a new life unless we make some necessary adjustments and change the way we used to think or do things in other words if we keep doing the same thing and expecting to have different results, it's not going to work. A new year gives us an opportunity to begin again more intelligently. God has given us grace to see this new year. Many died last year, but you and I have the grace of God and the privilege to cross over into this new year so that we can Realign, readjust, recalibrate, as it were, our thinking processes and the way we do things. Because where there is a desire for progress, where there is a desire for possibilities, then change is an inevitable desire, an inevitable price that you have to pay in other words if progress is desirable if possibility is desirable then change is inevitable you can't afford to make progress this year without adjusting realigning you know working on the way things used to be for example there is no way you are going to have a change of year if you keep thinking the way you used to think before that's a fact. You cannot sustain a desire and experience possibilities thinking the same old way. Some time ago, I told you that just like familiar spirits are dangerous, familiar thinking is also dangerous. In fact, familiar thinking is even more dangerous than familiar spirits. <laughs> you see, because you can't keep thinking at this particular level and expect to get to another particular level higher. Now... You've got to start adjusting your mind, thinking differently, behaving differently. Why? Where there is no possibility for change, there is no hope for improvement. If we are going to improve on our lives this year, we've got to make up our minds to change. Change is inevitable when desire is desirable. So the first thing you've got to do this year, if you are going to experience unlimited possibilities, is to change, one, your thinking processes. How do you think? You see, because where you are today is a result of your thought processes. Yeah. Your thought processes brought you to where you are today. So where you will be tomorrow is a direct reflection of your different thoughts Processes. In fact, Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, For as he thinketh, so is he. But your thoughts are predicated or based on the quality of information that is available to you. That's why we say in church here that information is the bedrock of transformation. Information is the bedrock of transformation. If you are going to be transformed, then you need quality information. And we are glad to know that the most important source of information is the word of God. And we have the word of God in Romans chapter 12 verse 2. It says, be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So in other words, our transformation is entirely based on the renewing of our minds. How? By the word of God. So this year, 
We've got to start changing the way we think. A new year simply is just a change of calendar. It doesn't constitute a new life if we keep thinking the same way we have been thinking last year. So, change the way you think. Change your approach to life. And this morning, I want to give us 12 major areas of focus that will help us live an upward life. You cannot have an upward life when you focus on downward habits. The only way you can experience an upward life is when you begin to have upward habits. 12 months in a year. This morning, I'll quickly run through 12 major areas that you should focus on this year if you are going to experience unlimited possibilities. These 12 areas of your life are critical in bringing you to your season of reward, to your season of testimonies, to your season of victories, and to your season of miracles. Can I hear an amen? amen. Number one. Since we started the year, and you know, in Psalms 11 verse 3, he says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can a righteous do? In other words, what you do in January to a large extent influences what happens the remaining part of the year. So, January being the first month of the year is the foundation of the year. Let's not joke with it. Let's approach January seriously. And today being the first Sunday of the year, I'd like you to take note of these 12 areas of focus and do everything you can to ensure that you deal or create great kingdom habits around these areas of focus. Again, number one, I'll challenge you or encourage you to make God's word your final authority. See, that's so important. God's word is not just an opinion of man. Some of us take the word of God as somebody's opinion. Oh, is Paul speaking? Oh, is Peter speaking? Oh, is John speaking? Oh, is James speaking? No. Take God's word and make it your final authority. What does that mean? It means any time you hear God's word spoken to you, preached to you, or taught you, you are not going to argue with it. You are going to make up your mind to make God's word your final authority. In fact, in Mark's gospel, chapter 13, verse 31, St. Mark's gospel, 13, 31 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. In other words, your opinions may fail. People's ideologies and philosophies will pass away. But the word of God stands at sure. The word of God is immutable, impeccable, unbreakable, unbendable. In fact, you can change it. So it is better to live your life based on the immutability and impeccability and infallibility of God's word. That's a better way to live. So change your mindset concerning the word of God. Make God's word your final authority. Final, I mean, final authority. It doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what anybody does. Make God's word your final authority. Don't argue with the word. You know, a lot of people have this opinion of, oh, well, uh, I like this one, but I don't like this one. No, 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 no. That's how to live in unlimited possibilities. That's how to experience miracles without end. Because it's just simple wisdom. Every other thing is transient, but the word of God standeth sure. Amen. In Psalm 119, he says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. So, this settled word of God has ability to change your life forever. Settled. So that's the first thing I like you to do. Make God's word your final. I didn't say your secondary. No, final. In other words, if there are any arguments, the question is, what has God's word got to say about it? If there is an issue to be resolved, 
The question is, what's God's word got to say about it? You've got to drop your traditional thinking. Yes, I am from Africa. Yes, I'm a chief in my village. Or my father said, my mother said, uh-uh. What has God's word got to say about the situation? It's not about traditional or cultural thinking. Do not bring down the word of God and place it at a lower level and put your tradition above it. No. You know, Jesus warned. He says, many people have made the word of God of none effect. How? By their traditions. If there is a conflict between tradition and the word of God, which should you choose? You are not answering like you are sure. Some of us will choose tradition. Eh? I know the Bible says so, but in our family, your family will pass away. The word of God standard forever. And it just makes simple sense to depend on what is forever than what is transient. Come on, is that not true? I'd rather stake my life on something that is eternal than something that is temporary. Because when all is said and done, like we say, when the chiefs are down, your traditional belief will fly through the window. <laughs> when the chiefs are down, when the rubber meets the road, all those, your cultural inclination can't help you. But it's the word of God that will produce a miracle for you. And as followers of Jesus, we have a mandate to what? Let the word of God be our final authority. In fact, the word of God is the end to all arguments. Did you hear that now? Now, this is so important. That's why I spent a little more time on this. The others, I'm going to zap through them. Because this is the foundation of every other thing. When you have issues, quarrels, when you are thinking, what do I do? What decision do I take? Go to what? The word. Whatever the word says is what? The final authority. Are you going to make that happen this year? Number two, decide to attend all services in church. Make up your mind this year. It's too early to continue to live your life like you did last year, this year, and expect unlimited possibilities. It's not going to happen. Because like I said when I started, you can't keep doing the same thing, Sunday, Sunday, Christian, and expect unusual shifts in your finances or in your health. It's not going to happen. A new year does not mean new life. It's just changing calendar. It is what you do that makes it new for you, amen? And how you think. So decide to make church attendance a priority. Attend all, beginning from tonight. Amen? I didn't hear an amen. amen. Every event you hear. Do not allow football, movie, party, family towns union meeting, society meeting. Take the place of church attendance. Say amen. <laughs> Club. Because again, like I said, when the chief sat down, none of those things will help you. Every evil pronouncement against your destiny, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Welcome to Miracle Assembly, a place where miracles are assembled and distributed. We have a mandate of liberating people for quality living. The Word of God comes alive through the unction of the Holy Spirit upon His servants, Pastor Jeffrey and Pastor Laveth Iyanawa, as they teach and preach weekly. We invite you to join us every Wednesday at 5 p.m. prompt and on Sundays for our first service at 7.30 at 147 Upper Owina Road by Waterboo Police Station off Argo Street via Ekewan Road, Benin City and for our second service at 9.15 a.m. at 54 Boundary Road before Ebenezer Junction, GRA, Benin City. Just one visit will change your life forever. Pastor Jeffrey and Pastor Loveth Iyonowa, as well as the happy family of Miracle Assembly, expect to see you this week. Miracle Assembly, liberating people for quality living. Because what you hear in the house of God is what builds you up. The word of God builds you up. You know that? Yeah. It builds you up and gives you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. Number three, pray in tongues daily. Pray in tongues. Oh boy. If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you need to pray in tongues. See, you will never, now, now, now listen carefully, you will never, never, I stress, never enter into a dimension of spiritual power if you don't pray in tongues. Or to put it differently, 
There is a dimension of power you will never experience as a Christian if you don't pray in tongues. You'll just be operating in shallow waters. And that is why, watch this, some certain things are happening to you. Speaking in tongues moves you to a higher dimension of power where the forces of darkness can touch you. You will not understand it until you are in that realm. You know, that's why I'm preaching when I'm preaching to you. It's so important. Do you know, if you have never had your fingers burnt, you will not know how painful it is to put your finger in fire. No matter how you describe it, like somebody said, the taste of the pudding is in the eating. Don't, you can't describe it. Give him to eat. Now, there is a dimension of power. And you know, in this world, there are powers. But the power generated by tongues is a higher level of power. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You become invincible to the forces of darkness. They can't touch you. Have you ever seen a fly perching on a hot stove? You will roast. That's how it is. All those yama yama, you know, nonsense that the devil puts on you, tries to attack your finance, your health, your children, your... I didn't say when you are filled with the Holy Ghost. I say when you pray in tongues daily. Jude verse 20. He says, building up your most holy faith. Jude chapter 1 verse 20. Building up yourself in your most holy faith. How? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Faith is a master key to a world of unlimited possibilities. So, when you pray in tongues, praying in the Holy Ghost, which is praying in tongues, you are building, you are fortifying you are creating some spiritual muscles. Karusha Yadaba. In the realms of the spirit, no witch will dare you. All this demonic oppression you get in the night, you say people are coming to press me on certain dreams I have. You won't have those dreams anymore. And you pray daily in tongues. It's not the exclusive preserve of a pastor. It's a dimension. I'm talking about power. You know what power is? You know we live in a world of powers. There are demonic powers. But you can surmount them. Any witch, no matter the, how wicked or vicious that witch is, won't come near your territory if you speak in tongues daily. They can't stop you. But you know, because people don't know, they don't know how to apply it. So I'm challenging you. In fact, let me put it clearly. After you get born again, the next thing for a Christian is to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, your Christianity will be fraught with a lot of frustrations. You will be crawling. When others are soaring like eagles, you will be crawling like dog. That's the difference. You say, Pastor, I am not strong spiritually. It's because you are not speaking in tongues. Pastor, some certain things are happening to me I don't understand. It's because you are not speaking in tongues. That's the powerhouse of the Christian. Say amen. So desire it. Number four, you need to give progressively. Give progressively. In other words, increase your offerings this year. And don't negotiate your tithe. Don't listen to any demon anywhere in human clothes telling you that you shouldn't pay tithe. You know what I'm saying this? See, if you do not understand that in this world, principles govern, principles rule our world, you will think that the world is run by chance occurrences. In other words, our world is governed by laws. For example, there's a law called the law of gravity, right? If I jump up now, I come down. Whether I like it or not, this law takes effect because I'm on earth. Now, for me to jump up and stay up, I have to apply another kind of law. That's what the airplane does. The airplane taps into a higher law, so suspends gravity. Not, because, not that it eliminates gravity. It just taps into the law of lift and law of aerodynamics that suspends gravity for a while. That's why that heavy machine can fly in the air for several hours. But gravity still exists. So I'm trying to stress that somebody says, I don't believe in Titan. Okay, no problems. But the effects of not Titan, you will experience. I don't believe there's gravity. When you jump, you will know if you are still alive after you land, you will be a believer in gravity. Nobody will tell you. No school will tell you. That's how it is. You know, sometimes many of us say, I don't, you can wake up today and say, I don't believe today is Sunday, it's Tuesday. No, I won't argue with you. Are you getting me? See, there are some certain things you don't argue that are facts. I don't believe the sun is shining. I don't have a problem with you. 
Because you have a right to your belief. But does it remove the fact that the sun is shining? That's how it is. It is too late in the day to tell me tithing don't work. I've been practicing this for over 30 something years. It works. Are you following me? It works. I have evidence, first class, first hand evidence. The person sitting close to you has evidence. Amen? Amen. So it's not just pastor. I have evidence that he works. <laughs> and I also can tell you of people who are not tithing, and they also have evidence. It's not that some of them are too ashamed to explain it. Because it can't be the same. No. See, the laws of God cannot be broken. You can't break a covenant. Titan is a covenant thing. It's not whether I like or not. It's a covenant thing. So wisdom demands that you tap into that covenant, connect with the covenant, so the covenant can take you to another level. Can I hear an amen? amen. So give progressively. Decide to increase your offering. You say, Pastor, what's the implication of that? I'll tell you this. If you are not a giver today, you will be a beggar tomorrow. I can guarantee you. It doesn't matter what you have today if you are not giving. You know why? Giving is living. Everything that lives, give to live. Human beings take out eh? carbon dioxide and take in oxygen. Plants most times do the reverse, right? No matter how delicious the food you ate last night is, if you are pressed and you don't go to the toilet, you will soon be oppressed. You will go to the hospital. See, I want to keep the food in my stomach as a souvenir. Every living thing gives. Rivers give. They keep flowing. If you are not giving, there is a sin. It's there. They call dead sin. It collects. It doesn't give. Anybody who is not giving is dead. That river, if some of you have been to Israel, is dead. Dark is just collects water. It's called the dead sea. Just collects water. Just collects. It doesn't give out. So it's dead. Anything that is not giving is dead. Waiting for burial. Listen. This law of giving is not whether you are a Christian. Whether you are a Christian, Muslim, or a pagan. Giving is a law that works for everybody. You didn't hear what I said? See, it's not about whether you go to church. If you are giving and you are a pagan, you will prosper. Why? It's a law. I, I hope I'm making myself clear. There are some very notorious, wicked unbelievers, but you see what they are giving. That's why they are not dying. So it is not about uh, whether, but now, here is where the qualification is. Who do you give to? You can't give to God, and God will not pursue you. Money. If you give something to a rich man, you get a rich man's reward. If you give something to God, you get godly reward. And how many of you have ever gotten a reward from God in your life? I think all of us have. So, it's not comparable. If you give something to a king and you give something to a, a commoner, the rewards are not the same. Unless you don't know who God is. That's why you think if you give an offering or a tithe to God that you won't get anything. You cannot experience what they are experiencing if you are not doing what they are doing. That's why the Bible says God is no respecter of persons. You can't be given to him and he will not lift you. No. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together and running over. Shall men. See? One man gave but men. It comes multiplied. But let me settle this right now. Prayer and fasting cannot make you prosper. Financially. Once it is financial prosperity, the application of praying and fasting is useless. In fact, fasting in poverty is hunger strike. It's double jeopardy punishment times too. Everything has its rules and regulations. If money is the reason why you are going to start that three days prayer and fasting, just end it before you start. Because if you finish fasting and you didn't give, you have just wasted, in fact, you have conserved your food. I think that's even better. So that you can have more food next time. It's like telling me that I want to pass my exams, I'm going to fast and pray and I will not read. Is that a right thing? Fasting and prayer is good, though. It will not help your brain. Okay? When you pray after you have read, not that you pray alone and you don't read, you will fail. 
So if you don't give and you pray, they pour oil until you turn to dodo. <laughs> if you are not, I'm telling you, whether you are a Christian, Muslim, or a pagan, the law is the law. After this service, go and find out people who are really wealthy. They will tell you they have a giving attitude. Find out people who are poor. They got monkey fingers. They don't give. They are very stingy. <laughs> so give and tithe regularly. Start it. When you start tithing, eh, nobody will convince you again. It's true. Number five. Seek to win at least a soul a month. Many of us are not soul winners. That's not good enough. Proverbs 11, 30 says, He that winneth souls is wise. Wisdom demands that you populate God's kingdom. Seek to win at least one soul a month. Number six, seek people higher than you to inspire you. Proverbs 13, 20 says, He that walketh with the wise shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Look for people that are higher than you. If you are going to make friends, look for people that are higher than you. Stop running around turkeys and expect to soar with the eagles. It's not going to happen. Every evil pronouncement against your destiny, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Welcome to Miracle Assembly, a place where miracles are assembled and distributed. We have a mandate of liberating people for quality living. The Word of God comes alive through the unction of the Holy Spirit upon His servants, Pastor Jeffrey and Pastor Loveth Iyanoa, as they teach and preach weekly. We invite you to join us every Wednesday at 5 p.m. prompt and on Sundays for our first service at 7.30 at 147 Upper Owina Road by Awotobu Police Station off Argo Street via Ekewen Road, Benin City and for our second service at 9.15 a.m. at 54 Boundary Road before Ebenezer Junction, GRA, Benin City. Just one visit will change your life forever. Pastor Jeffrey and Pastor Love F. Iyonowa, as well as the Happy Family of Miracle Assembly, expect to see you this week. Miracle Assembly, liberating people for quality living. <laughs>